Hello, I'm Ron Clark. Today, I want to talk about the gate makers. This here is the only gate maker that I personally own, and it's called the Monolith version, and it's big. Um, it's two-sided. One has the Hebrew tree on it, and one has the Gras tree on it. Now, the gate makers actually began as the very first tool I made called Tree of Life Meditation Altar. Here's a little picture of it. And uh, it was very simple. It had no crystals involved, no wiring, no nothing. It was just a meditation altar to use for your own contemplation. Um, but that didn't satisfy me. <laughs> and it needed to be something with crystals in it and maybe some wiring. So I came up with the first gate maker. The first gate maker was a disc. It was a rather large disc. Here's another picture. And it was the first one that involved crystals. Now these are uh, spheres, crystal spheres that are embedded in this surface. This surface is actually several layers thick and the crystals are embedded. And between the crystals is wiring. Um, gold, silver, and copper wiring. And a specific uh, sequence um, that I've devised. So each of the spheres, the crystal spheres, are connected to each other just like the tree of life. And the wires go from crystal to crystal following the, the pattern of the, uh, the lettered paths and the unlettered paths of the Tree of Life. All the paths are wired in. Um, so I went from the uh, disc version. I've made a few during the years. Uh, here's some more pictures. Um, probably the most complex is one I made several years ago for a friend. Uh, very elaborate design work in it. Um, and then I made, started making what I call the monolith versions, which are these standing monolith-like structures. Um, I made a cabinet version um, that had opening doors, um, quite a few different versions. What I'm doing now is a much smaller, compact, portable version, because this it's not very portable, as you can tell. Um, <clears throat> so the portable version is very easy to move around, place to place, take with you, um, very easy to work with, doesn't require shelving space to, uh, to store it. So, <clears throat> the theory of this tool is you project your awareness into it. The, it does nothing in and of itself it doesn't project energy, um, it's not charged, um, by me at least. Um, the only thing I do is I tune each crystal to the Sephirotic energies. And this is tuned to Kether, this is tuned to Malku, uh, Yesod, Tiferet, etc. So, the idea is, you project your awareness into one of the spheres, and then you walk the path in your mind. You know, you, you transit the path that is connected here in the tool by the wires and the crystals. And so, the energy of um, um, a gate maker is on a plane. It is exists in this plane. It doesn't come out. It doesn't uh, reach to the other side. It exists only in this plane of the crystal spheres and the wiring. Okay? That makes sense to you? Um, <clears throat> now, it, it's really complicated to make these things. Um, there's several layers of card... Again, this is made of cardboard, the usual medium that I use. There are several layers of cardboard that um, each have holes for the Sephirot um, cut into them so that there's room for the spheres to sit in to those holes. 
and then I inscribe them uh, with little slits where the paths are and lay in the wires. So the wires are underneath the surface here, um, connecting these two, the two crystals um, um, quite physically. The wires touch the crystals. They make a physical connection between crystals. Um, so that when you use Game Maker, there is a physical uh, path to follow. Um, so the idea is that you start, you, you energize, the, you just put any energy you like into the crystals that are involved in the path of the gate that you're working. Um, you energize the crystals and then you project your awareness into the, the uppermost of the crystals. And then you travel mentally this connection. So the, the, the path of, of He right here between Kether and Hokma. You charge Kether, you charge Hokma crystals, which have already been tuned to Kether and Hokma. So adding energy to them just sort of excites them and empowers them and runs energy along the wires between the two. So when you project your awareness in, you have this path already established between Kether and Hokma, and you can experience it more fully and more readily. This is all that a gate maker does. Um, it's not necessary for working the gates, but it, it facilitates their working. Um, people who experience the gate maker uh, say that the gate maker teaches them certain things um, just by its structure, its nature. Making a magical tool takes focus and concentration and consistent focus and concentration throughout the entire making of the magical tool. For example, when I cut out these layers and layers um, that form the, the substance, you know, the, um, the fill of the tool, each hole that I'm cutting out, I am thinking at the time, okay, this is the Kether hole, this is the Hakma hole, this is the Bina hole, etc., on down. Everything comes with that focus, that concentration. Um, each of these uh, parts of the design are printed on um, a, a thick paper, 110 pound paper, and then cut out. Each one is cut out. The discs are uh, glued onto a thin card and then cut out. So everything that I'm cutting out, when I'm cutting out this Kether uh, decoration, I'm thinking this is the Kether decoration, this is the Hokma decoration, this is the Bina. And when I'm applying the paths, the, the, the lines between the Sephiroth, I'm thinking, okay, this is He, this is Vav, you know, etc. I'm thinking about what I am doing and adding intention to it and my will. So that by the time I've got the whole thing constructed, it essentially is fully functional. All I have to do is tune it. And the tuning goes so smoothly because the intention, when I put that, that quartz sphere in, I'm thinking this is the Kether quartz sphere, etc., on down. So then when it comes to tuning, it all fits. It all just falls into place. Now, tuning, how I tune these is I gather some of the Catholic brilliance. This is what I use in tuning is the Catholic brilliance. So I'm focusing the Catholic brilliance into the sphere, strongly focusing Catholic brilliance into the sphere. And when the Catholic brilliance is in the sphere, I project my awareness in there with the Catholic brilliance. So along with the Catholic brilliance and my awareness, I then create Kether with my awareness. I am familiar enough with all these Sephiroth that I create the state of Kether within that sphere. And I impress it upon the, the body of the crystal itself, the physical astral and mental body of the crystal 
So when I am done with my tuning, that crystal is permanently transformed at a physical, an astral, and a mental level so that it is Kether. It is Hakma. It is Bina, etc. And I'm always working in a sequence. Kether, Hokma, Bina, Tiferet, Gedula, Gebura, etc. It's always done in this sequence. Whatever I'm doing, if I'm cutting out little holes, it's done in sequence. So all of these things are consistent throughout the making of the tool. And that is important in all magical tool making, that there is a consistency, a focus, throughout the whole process. So that by the end, when it is a finished product, everything about this tool is made with the intention of uh, the, the result. <laughs> so by the time I am finished, it is the tree of life. It is uh, what I have intended for it to be. That's the game maker. Next time will be on the radiators, another tool that I'm famous for. In the meantime, there will be more game makers in the world. There's quite a few of them already, but I will continue making the, the smaller portable game makers for the future. Alrighty, bye-bye.